Now the next uh, the next group and individuals we're going to recognize are people that have been involved been involved with the Travel Air 5000, and we're going to start with Harry Hansen. We are very pleased to have Harry here today. I've, I've known Harry now for uh, I guess a couple of years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, he and I were both Continental pilots, but at different times, different bases, and, and all the rest of that. But that was kind of the tie that um, that bound us here. Uh, we originally found out about Eamon Carter's uh, Travel Air 5000 approximately three years ago, maybe a little bit longer ago than that, when uh, when Don uh, Pyatt was doing some research on uh, uh, on a story about Eamon Carter taking uh, his lunches to Dallas in a paper bag. And uh, so he wanted to find out whether that was myth or reality. And in the process of doing that, he saw some pictures of, uh, of an airplane sitting at uh, Eamon Carter's um, uh, Shady Oak Farm. And uh, he thought, well, I wonder if that's still around, if it still exists. And he looked up the registration number, and lo and behold, it was registered to uh, someone named Harry Hansen in Hamilton, Texas. And so a uh, little more research was done, and uh, then Don and Bill went down and visited with Harry, and uh, that started a process over, uh, over a period of a couple of years of meeting Harry and uh, seeing what he wanted to do with the restoration, that we wanted to help him uh, restore the airplane. He had found the airplane in 1963 or acquired the airplane in 1962, was it? Okay, and there's a picture out here in the hall. I appreciate it. You take the time to look at the pictures because it showed the picture of when Harry got the airplane in 62, what it looked like. And this airplane had been uh, put in uh, Eamon Carter's front yard, essentially, in 1931. And over a period of about 30 years, it literally melted into the ground. Uh, Ken Brody worked on the airplane after Harry had it and, and helped do some of the, the restoration work on the airplane. But uh, Harry and other of his friends over a period of about 50 years uh, started to do a, a restoration of the airplane. Uh, they did a lot of conservation of the airplane, and as the, the people at, uh, uh, at the Air and Space Museum tell us, uh, you conserve um, you preserve and then you restore the best you can. So Harry, uh, Harry did all of those things for us up to the point where a few years ago uh, we were looking for some people that might help acquire the airplane and bring it back here to Fort Worth. Now I can tell you that in the process of the, the many times that my, my wife Donna and I would stop going to, back and forth to Austin, we'd stop in and visit with Harry and, and Jackie and we'd talk about the airplane and I told them initially that there were a number of people in Fort Worth who were interested in, uh, in bringing the airplane back to Fort Worth and Harry, um, Harry mentioned to me that there were also some people in Dallas that would like to have it in Dallas too. And so any of you know the, the stories of Eamon Carter and, and Fort Worth and Dallas, that just wouldn't do. So in the, in the process we finally started a campaign to raise the funds to uh, be able to acquire the airplane. And uh, Harry was very generous with us. He, uh, he would keep moving the time period back, but he kept telling us too that there was a group in California that was really interested in the airplane. So uh, it was along about uh, two years ago, I guess, that uh, uh, I got a phone call one day from a lady named Joy Webster. Uh, with uh, Morningstar Partners and I really didn't know who Morningstar Partners was and I didn't know who uh, who Joy was and I just uh, assumed that she was one of the secretaries and um, uh, so we arranged a time for, for them to come in and meet and uh, that was an interesting meeting and unfortunately Joy can't be here today she called me this morning and said that she just woke up sick as a dog and that she just really is sorry that she's missing this today but she wasn't be able to attend but there are a couple of us that were here and we had this group of about 20 people I guess who showed up one day and walked in here and it was really kind of interesting because it was a bunch of men in suits and this one woman and I didn't really know any of these uh, any of these men at that point in time didn't know Joy either but within five minutes of the time they all showed up it was very apparent who the boss was and it was Joy, and they all worked for Joy. And uh, so we were here, and Joy had all the day to hear about aviation history here. She'd been involved with, uh, uh, with uh, Bob Simpson acquiring cars for his collection and had no idea of the connection with Eamon Carter to aviation. So uh, she learned a lot while she was here, and I kept on asking her if she, uh, you know, she had time to, to do this and see the airplanes. And uh, it was kind of funny because she said, oh, yeah, I've got all the time in the world, and all these, all these men are looking at their watches and talking to their phones and stuff, but they weren't going to leave as long as Joy was here. And so that was really very interesting. So uh, 
at a, at a point in time, uh, they uh, we took Joy down to, to meet with Harry, and uh, it was really very interesting to watch that process take place because it was the first time Joy and Harry had met each other. And I've got these pictures in my mind of watching that because when the two of them finally got together, everybody else just kind of backed off. And it was in a little old hangar, and it was a, it was a hot day, and I think it was in July uh, when it all took place. And it was one of those hot Texas days where the... Uh, um, uh, where the uh, the bugs are all out there jumping around and beating against the side of the building and stuff, and I can it was just it was just hot. It was almost stifling, and here's the bugs bouncing off of the hangar and all that kind of stuff. And pretty soon I look over and Joy and Harry are shaking hands, and uh, we knew at that point in time that the airplane was the airplane was going to come back up here, and it was going to be restored to the uh, to the fashion that it needed to be. Uh, that it deserved to be, uh, not only for the efforts that Harry did with the airplane and maintaining it and preserving it for those 50 years, but that particular airplane, more than any other airplane that's been here, really personifies aviation here in Fort Worth. It was the first airplane that was that was used here in Fort Worth. It was designed specifically to carry passengers, uh, carried all of four of them, uh, only flew for about four or five years, and then it really became obsolete because uh, passenger travel was so popular, even though we're talking about the Depression era, the, that uh, the, the traffic demanded bigger airplanes. And so uh, that's when the airplane kind of really literally got put out to pasture. Well, once it got to, once the commitment was made to bring the airplane back here, uh, there was a uh, there was a process of looking to find out uh, who could do the restoration work. And I know uh, uh, Bill Guy uh, knew about Lanny and, and Lanny's group of folks, and and I was asked to come in on a, on a meeting one day, and I can tell you that Joy said, "What should this cost us to do this?" And I said, "I really don't know, but I'm going to I'll call around." And we're connected with a lot of other museums in the country, and so I put out the word and said, uh, "What's the, what? What would you do?" And I talked to the Museum of Flight and Marine Corps Museum and Smithsonian and a lot of other people and said, "What should this cost?" And so they gave me some ideas, and uh, Joy asked me to come into a come into a meeting, and I didn't know Lanny at all, and at the time. I missed the point that Lanny's father is, is uh, Bob Parcells. Bob had done work for us on the OV-10 mock-up. Uh, he had done the uh, he did the restoration on the fuselage. I never met Lanny during that period of time, but I met Lanny in that meeting, and uh, once again I got to see Joy make a make a deal with somebody on a handshake, and I've seen her do that more than once now, and Lanny and and his crew. Uh, David and uh, and Tommy and some of the other people went down to uh, Hamilton and brought the airplane back and over a period of a year we got to know these people very well and got to watch true craftsmen and magicians work on that airplane and the absolute heart that went into that airplane uh, and watching these guys on a week by week basis and uh, as Lanny would say, I would, we would go down for interviews and stuff, and I would refer to we, and he always reminded me that it was the royal we, and he was right, because we couldn't even hold their tools for them. These guys were just excellent work, That what they did, and they did, uh, they did the airplane and the restoration on the airplane to absolutely the, the epitome of what any and all of us would like, and it's now on display here in Fort Worth. It, you may not be able to walk in every day and go see it, but the craftsmanship that they put into the airplane and the heart and soul that they put into the airplane, we have an iconic piece of aviation history here now in Fort Worth that we hope will uh, lend itself to inspiration and education of the community. And so we want to recognize that entire group of people uh, who were involved in that process. So the first award we're going to give to Harry. And uh, again, it's the Wings Award. And it's a 2015 Wings Award presented to Harry Hansen in recognition of his significant contribution to North Texas aviation history by the preservation of the Travel Air 5000 C3002. Mary, thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a true pleasure. You want to do that again? Okay. Here, we're going to do this again. Okay. We're sorry Jackie couldn't be here, but... There you go. Okay, good. Turn him around for a minute. Turn Harry around? We might make him dizzy. All right, Harry, we're going to turn you around. So we can get your smiling face on oh, camera. Yeah, there we go. Here, turn it around so everybody can see it. Uh, 
Okay. All right, we're going to turn you back around. Don't get dizzy.